Okay, hey YouTube, how y'all doing? Um, this is uh, Matthew Morgan coming back to make another video. Um, this video has to do a little bit with uh, people asking God for stuff and then messing it up because their wisdom is flawed. In other words, you pretty much ask God for something and then tell God you're not ready for it. Basically, that's what it is. Anyway, and I've seen this happen a lot with people, so that's why I said it don't surprise me at all because it happens to everybody. And I do mean everybody. Anyway, so... This is the usual um, way that this happens. One, a person goes through life, finds themselves in need of a certain thing or person. So, some people try to get it on their own, which don't work out because you don't know the intentions of the thing or person you're dealing with. And it fails pretty much always because you don't know the job you're trying to get. You don't know if that job's even going to accept you or if it does, what's coming with it. A person you're trying to date or be friends with, you don't know what the intentions of that person is. So you get played a lot or anything else like a car, a house, anything else you don't know the inner workings of it. So you might think, oh, this car is nice. This house is nice. Come to find out it's expensive as hell and you can't deal with it, but because it looked nice, you want it anyway. But anyway, so the scenario, you go through life, you get burnt one too many times by a situation. Then you pray to God and ask him to help you get through it or fix it or send you something that will. The father hears your prayers and he waits for a certain time to answer them because he sees in your heart there's something blocking your ability to deal with what he sends you. So while he's preparing what you asked him for, he's trying to look in your heart and see what's causing the blockage of unreadiness. Then he tries to do what he can to remove it, but he's not going to force anyone to remove something from their self that they're not ready to remove for whatever the purpose might be pain, might be anger. Who knows? Pain and anger are usually the two triggers that cause every block. So, but yeah, so then when you do pray for it and he sees that you are ready for it or he knows that he'll make a way for you to be able to deal with the situation when he sends it to you. It comes to you, but because you doubt your own ability to deal with it, you reject it. And after which, it moves to someone else and now you're looking at God like, what the hell? Didn't I just pray for that? Why did it just leave me? What did I do? And he's trying to tell you in the best way possible. You prayed for it. I made you ready. I sent it to you. And for your own human reasons of, how should I say, without being a jerk, low self-esteem, you rejected it. And I sent it to you because A, you prayed for it, and B, I already had a plan to help you deal with it. But because you assumed you weren't ready for it, you passed it by and you lost it. Because you doubt yourself. I knew you were ready, and I knew I could help you deal with it, but you doubt yourself. Straight up. Second thing. Image. Like the father might send you a certain car or a house or a job or a person to be around your date. And because the image is not what you like, you reject it because it's not what you had in mind. But since God knows what's best and he reads your heart and he knows what you actually need, 
that's what he sends to you. But because you're a human and you're always trying to please other people, you want something attractive. But attractive is many different definitions. So in his eyes, attractive is the spirit, not the body. To you, it's the body, not the spirit. So when he sends you something or somebody, you don't want it because of how it looks or how it moves or how it operates. And the father's like, I know how you feel about it. Just give it a chance. Because, yeah, you might be a janitor making $10 an hour, but you're not broke. Yeah, you might be a crossing guard, but you're not broke. Yeah, it might be a punch buggy, but it gets you from A to B. Yeah, it might be an apartment, but you got a roof over your head. Person might not be all that attractive, but they care about you. And you're not in the ER with no high blood pressure or stab wounds, are you? No, you're not. Trying to give you what I know will help you better yourself, not something that will crush you. And then the whole thing about blaming him when it doesn't work out is like, Oh, Heavenly Father, I prayed to you for a certain thing and it didn't work out. Why didn't you tell me it wouldn't work out? And he's like, um, just to say this. You prayed to me. I kept it away from you. You kept trying to push towards it. You got it, and then you lost it. Every time you prayed to me about if it would work out, I showed you it wouldn't, and you went for it anyway, and it, what I showed you happened. Simple as that. You might think, oh, I just let you go into it and let you get hurt. No, you prayed for a sign that this was not going to work, I showed you and you still went for it just because you don't want to be alone. Because there are some people on earth that will stay with somebody just to not have to be alone. And that's not always wise, but people do that kind of sh anyway. And just to say I have someone, they'll take abuse and neglect all in one just to say I got somebody. Not smart, but people do that. But anyway, <laughs> so he, when he hears you praying for something, he's, his holy eyes are searching around the entire earth, finding someone that matches your prayer or finding a situation that matches your prayer. But here's the only thing. When you pray for a certain thing, someone else is also praying for something too. And the Father is matching up the two prayers to what works the best. And then them two situations collide eventually. And he eventually tries to help you learn how to maintain a relationship and work out the kinks so you last. But a lot of people don't last because they don't listen. Some people just jump into shit and don't want to see the reality that this person might not be for you. This person might be. This situation might be. This one might not be. But as a human, you do it the opposite way because you want what looks best. Not what's needed, what looks best. And that's usually where you fuck up because just because that job pays you $20 an hour does not mean you need to go for it. Just because that job pays you 10 don't mean you just walk away from it. Because you never know. You might get the $20 an hour position and hate it. You might get the $10 position and love it. Shit, you might get a, a, a position where you are... What, what do they call that thing when you're a... Um, can't remember what it is, but you're pretty much... You're, you're, like, you're like you're somebody else's understudy. But you don't get paid, but you get taught how to do things. So when you get through life, you learn how to get shit done better. You might like that. Who knows? But God only sends you what he knows you need, not always what you want. But it's up to you to either accept it or reject it. And he can't force you to, but when you lose it or things keep going wrong because you're not right somewhere in your life, 
In other words, he sees you somewhere fucking up and you're not being honest with the person you're trying to get with or him. So he keeps you separated from that person. So you get time to get your shit right and fix that problem. And if you don't, you will never get the person that he had for you. So, yeah. Alrighty. I'm out. Bye-bye. And oh yeah, sometimes the person that you might need in your life might be right in front of you, but because of whatever you're dealing with and refuse to let it go, that person may eventually pass you by or wait for you. So, first one is more likely. Good luck with the second one. I'm out.